What's up, everybody? Good evening. Some of you might have thought that I had forgotten about this. Some of you might have thought that I canceled this, but neither is true. We have got one more video to do in this little series, and then I am moving on. I wanted to do this before the season started. Obviously, that didn't happen, but I really wanted to make sure it was at least done before week two. So we're going to go ahead and finish it today. This is the 2025 NFL Draft Look Ahead or preview, or whatever you want to call it. We got one position left to look at. It's going to be safety, and I understand that safety may not be the most compelling position, but I said I was going to finish this, and I'm going to go ahead and finish it now. I'm going to take a look at some of the top safeties in the upcoming draft, and you can do with this information as you will. So, safety right now, not a super high priority position for the Seahawks. If you're thinking about the 2025 draft, but when you really start putting it together, you you might be able to come to the conclusion that there could be some kind of move there. I know Julian Love's locked up for a while. He's not going anywhere and he's playing really well, but Ray Sean Jenkins on that two year deal, easy out after one year, he could be gone after this year. We might need that money. We might need that money to do something else. Avon Wallace, he's on a one-year deal. He's almost certainly going to be gone unless we can keep him at a cheap rate, which the way he's playing, maybe not. So do you think Kobe Bryant's a long-term safety on this team? Uh, probably not. He'll be around. But is he anything more than a backup? I don't think so. So if that's the case, safety matters. And we're going to take a look at some of these safeties here. I don't want to put all the eggs in the Jarek Reed basket when he's coming back from a major injury. Let's see how he looks this year. So, granted, this is not going to be a super high priority position in all likelihood, but it's worth discussing anyway. We got five guys we're going to go over in this video. Basically, every safety currently ranked as a top two round pick, according to the database. So... Got one guy who's all the way up here in the top 10, and then there's a big drop-off, the guys who are going to be in the mid to late second round. So it's not a bad safety class. It feels like most safety classes are like this, right? It feels like most safety classes are one stud that is just going to go way, way high, and then everything else is just going to like, yeah, it's, it's a clear step down. So let's go ahead and start with Malachi Starks of Georgia. He is the one true top safety prospect right now. Uh, another Georgia product, and he deserves the hype he is getting. He looks like he is going to be very special, and I totally get the early hype. So just real quick here, ignore 2024 since we're only two games into the season. Um, five interceptions over his first two years at Georgia. Um... Plenty of plays made against the run as well. He already has an interception to start this year, actually, as well. So the ball skills, you're seeing him. He's an excellent athlete. He can play all over the field. Very versatile. Should be able to do strong safety stuff, free safety stuff. You can play him a little bit at nickel corner. You can play him a little bit at linebacker. Play up in the box. Should be able to do all that. Smart player. High football IQ. He knows what he's looking at when he's trying to diagnose an opposing offense. Covers a lot of ground back there in that Georgia backfield. Makes a lot of plays on the ball. Definitely developing some real ball hawk skills. He can play man. He can play zone. <coughs> he's got the athleticism for man. And he's got the awareness for zone. Top end speed. His reaction time is very good. He triggers downhill fast. Really, talking about Malachi Starks, the only issue that I have would be He's probably a little too aggressive. He bites on fakes. He bites on double moves. He's a guy who, if he does that in the NFL, certain coordinators are going to pick up on it. They're going to take advantage of that, and they're going to try to beat him with the double moves, Trayvon Diggs style, and he's going to have to learn how to play a little bit more passively at times. And he's undersized, and he's already been dinged up a little bit in his career. I know he hasn't missed games, really, but... We are talking about a guy who is like 5'10", 185. If you play the way he plays at 5'10", 185, you might not last that long in this league. So there are a little bit of concerns with regards to that, but this is an excellent prospect in pretty much every other measurable way. 
Okay, Kevin Winston will be our next guy. As you can see, there's a drop-off, but Winston projected to be like an early to mid second round pick right now from the Penn State Nittany Lions. And so far, um, the stats aren't exactly blowing anybody away. He became like a full-time starter for Penn State last year. Main calling card is how good he is against the run. He physically should be able to do it all. His ability to come up and run support is very impressive, and he also shows good ability in coverage. Obviously, he hasn't showed up big with the numbers yet, but as we learned with Earl Thomas, big part of coverage is just not getting targeted. It's quietly, silently doing your job. He's got a long body with length to make plays on the ball. He'll make plays on the ball most players won't because he's got long arms and a long body. Plays with great physicality as well. He's a very physical safety. Good top speed. His top speed is very impressive. Excellent tackler. I think his missed tackle rate last year was like 2%. Works through traffic well. Good at stacking and shedding blockers. He can work through the wash and make a play on the ball. Hard hitter. Penn State uses him with great versatility. He should offer versatility in the NFL with his usage. Issues would be he plays too upright. I think that he might get blown up a little bit in the NFL because he plays a little too upright. He's not very strong. He is wiry. And in the NFL, that could be a bigger problem than it is for him in college. And there are some injury concerns with him as well. Hasn't really cost him that many games yet. But there is some concern that he might be a little injury prone when he gets to the NFL. So Kevin Winston Jr., good prospect. Not a Malachi Starks level prospect, but clearly somebody who belongs in that day two area definitely goes there. Next up, a guy we've talked about a little bit already on our Wednesday show, uh, Nick Emanuori of the Gamecocks, South Carolina Gamecocks. He is off to a pretty decent start this year. He's already got a pick six, 71 tackles, two picks, eight passes defense last year in just 11 games for South Carolina. The speed really stands out with Eman Wari. He's going to be, when he gets to the NFL, one of the fastest safeties. I think he's going to test kind of like Darnell Savage did. I think he's going to have like a 4-3-6, 4-3-8 type 40 at the Combine. Deadly in man coverage. You put him on a tight end, that tight end is going to have a heck of a time doing anything. Really good tackler. He's very clean with the way he tackles. He's technically sound, fundamentally sound constantly making plays on the ball. You can drop him back deep and he will come up violently to attack the run. Should be able to play nickel corner as well. So you are getting a versatile player here. So <clears throat> I think that you will find uses for him. You will be able to find many things that he can do in the NFL. He's a very smart player pre-snap. Uh, for that South Carolina defense, he's often the guy calling things out to the other players pre-snap, so he's a very cerebral player. I will say, zone defense is a work in progress. He makes some mental errors with knowing landmarks and where he's supposed to be in zone. That should come with time. Doesn't really do much as a blitzer. He is overly aggressive and he bites on fakes, so you can trick him a little bit as an offense. And he probably needs to add a little bit of muscle as well. That's... um. That's going to hurt him more in the NFL than it's hurting him in the uh, college game right now. But another really good prospect. I wonder if he offers the full versatility that McDonald is going to want. But in general, he's a good prospect. All right, now we got two Iowa guys to finish us off here. Both Iowa safeties. First is Sebastian Castro. Sebastian Castro. This is kind of this year's Cooper DeJean. Fun player, intriguing player, <clears throat> built up a nice little career at Iowa. Two years, didn't really play that much. Last two years, he's been the starter. Last year was kind of a breakout year for him alongside Cooper DeJean. A lot of plays made in the backfield, started becoming a little bit of a ball hawk. We'll see where it goes in 2024, but he should be able to play all over the defense. You can play this guy free safety, strong safety, slot corner, linebacker. You can do pretty much anything with this guy. Ultimate chess piece. Smart, he's got good instincts, he knows where to be, he has a good feel for where the play is coming, comes up very hard and effectively in run support, he's very sticky in man coverage, he's going to be a wizard in man coverage, I think, he's always around the ball, 
He's a hard hitter. So plenty of stuff to like. He's not the best athlete. He doesn't have great top speed. His abilities are more about his cerebral, uh, his ability to di uh, diagnose things cerebrally and his ability to um, stick with somebody in man coverage has a little less to do with his athleticism, excuse me, athleticism, and a little more to do with just a, an understanding of how to play the position technically. Doesn't work through traffic the best. If you get a blocker on him, he's not getting off of him. He doesn't shed the way you would like. Sometimes he whiffs when he's tackling. It's like an aggression thing, I feel like. It's one of those things where sometimes he goes a little too hard at it and he just whiffs. And by the time he gets into the NFL and actually plays in a game, he'll be almost 25. So we are talking about an older guy here. This guy started in the COVID year at Iowa. So it's been a while. You're not getting the full upside here. So the other Iowa safety, Xavier Nwankpa. He might be a little more interesting to you. I don't know. He's got a much shorter career. Um, last year was a kind of a bit of a breakout year for him in that secondary. He finally started being a full-time player, played pretty well. But there's still a lot we need to learn about him, to be perfectly honest. I'm going to be keeping a close eye on him this year. Uh, he's got good size for a safety, I can say that. He's six feet plus. He's like 195, maybe even 200. Really good coming up in run support. Very violent with the way he comes up in run support. Remarkable athlete, given his size. Um, typically, a safety that is this big is not going to be quite this athletic, but he is an exception to that. Really good tackler. Very technically sound tackler. Should be able to be a free safety or a strong safety or play both. So whatever defense you're running, he should fit in all right. He's a smart player. He reads defense as well. I'm sorry, he reads offense as well. I hope he can read a defense well because he plays on defense, but he reads offense as well. Has some nice speed as well. Good top end speed. The issue is he needs more experience and he needs more opportunities to show what he can do in coverage. Iowa used him in the robber role where he would kind of hang out underneath and read the quarterback and just go where he thought the ball was going and try to make a play. And he did really well at that. But we need to see him playing deep a little bit more here. We need to see him backpedal. We need to see him play with his back to the line of scrimmage. He needs opportunities to do these things. Right now, it's a projection. It's a theory. And I think quarterback's eyes can trick him. He'll follow a quarterback's eyes, try to make, go make a play. And if the quarterback is a savvy one, he might be able to trick him. But good prospect for sure. Interesting stuff. And that's it for our safeties. And that's it for the 2025 NFL Draft Preview. Mock draft stuff is coming. But for now, let's just try to digest the stuff that we've seen so far. Let me know what you think, if you think anything. See you guys later. Big game tomorrow. Let's go Hawks. And let me know what you guys think of the early look at the 2025 NFL Draft.